alongside a very special panel with Judy, opening up about her late life autism diagnosis. And since then, she's continued to spread awareness, something she and her three children live with. As a mum, it absolutely petrifies me. It's my biggest fear, is, okay. is leaving my children one day. My children are considered different because they're all autistic, and so am I. And I have often had comments like, I bet you wish there was a cure or something to fix your children, and, and I really don't. I think every single child is a miracle. Yeah. But it just makes me want to be around forever because they're so magical. Oh, we're here ah. to tell us more about using her experience as inspiration for something very special. It's Christine McGuinness. <laughs> Lovely to see you as always. Um, the clip that we showed was from a show called Pilgrimage, which kicks off um, this week. And that was quite a special experience for you, wasn't it? Because you've spoken before about struggling with friendship and you actually got quite close to a few of the other people that took part in the show. Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely amazing for me. Um, I struggled making friends all throughout school, all throughout my 20s. It's only the last couple of years. Since my diagnosis, really, that I've understood the reasons why I struggle to make friends and, yeah. and understood what I can do to help. Yeah. I know that I have, to, I have to try, I have to communicate, I have to put myself in and around other people. You've got to text back, you've got to plan things yeah. to keep a friendship going. And it's only the last couple of years that I've, I've really fully understood it. Yeah. And of course, as you've just seen, all my three children are all autistic and they struggle making friends. Mm. Um, I have want you got them... friends now? Yeah. I have, I have. And I want my children to, to watch Mummy and see that Mummy's Perfect. making friends and Mummy goes to work and, you know, Mummy's doing OK so that they will be OK. Yeah. It is for them. Everything I do is for them. And for me... To, to actively go and try and make friends and keep friendships. Mm. It, it is for my children. I mean, we met two years ago, do you remember, on the mm. games, and I used to come into this... It was like a really busy canteen area, and everybody else, the rest of the cast, would be there just all chatting away and, and really comfortable in each other's space. Mm. I would make any excuse to go for a drive in the car. Do you yeah, remember yeah, every yeah. single do you, day? Do you remember that, Liz? Um, every yeah, day. Every day. Like, Where's she gone? Yeah, She's gone. just disappearing. But it was because I, I didn't really understand what they were all talking about and chatting about and they'd be laughing and, and I just felt so uncomfortable. Yeah. So I would, I would say, I'm, I'm just going to go and make some calls or I'll go in, you know, I'll, I'll have my lunch in the car. But on pilgrimage, I had to stay with everyone. I had mm. to stay with mm. all the cast. I had to eat with everybody. Day. And it's the first time I've really done that. And everyone was so understanding and so yeah. lovely. And they asked questions. They were like, you know, why are you eating plain pasta when we're all having, like, a, a three-course meal? And, and I explained to them I've got sensory issues around food and yeah. instead of disappearing off on my own. And they were really, really kind and understanding. Yeah. And it just made me realise how important friends are. And also being open rather yeah. than sort of hiding, which, you yeah. know, you were doing when you were working with Liv. But that, that idea of how to make friends, the importance of making friends, is something you go into in your book, don't you? The magic is you, the magic Gorgeous. is me. Yeah. yeah, and as always, inspired by my children, I wanted to write a book where yeah. they, they could feel represented and understood and for other children to know how important their role is being a friend, being mm. a good friend to my children and for my children to, to do that back to them. It's, it's so wonderful and magical. And like I said, it's only the last couple of years I've really made good friends. And like Duncan, Duncan from Blue is one of my closest friends. We yeah. went on the run together. We'd done Celebrity Hunted. And having him by my side now, I'm, I'm doing so much more. We gave an award out together you feel last safe. week. Mm. And yeah. Because I've got a good friend. And I just think, wow, if I'd have had that when I was younger, how much more would I be doing? Wow. So, again, that's, that's why I wrote the book, because I think children themselves aren't praised enough for just being there for each other. Yeah. And the story is that they're looking for the magic, they go on this amazing adventure, and they don't quite understand what the magic is. Yeah. And, and the magic is the friendship between yeah. young children. Oh. I think... <laughs> what... Uh... What's brilliant about the book is that although, you know, your children yourself have got autism, I think what you were saying was quite true in regards to children in itself understanding friendship. Was that the idea? Did you want it to branch out to everybody and not specifically just children with autism? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, for, for autistic children or any children with additional needs, I do think that extra help and support from their peers 
is really, really important. Mm -hmm. But I just think for all children to know that being there for each other is is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to get that support from somebody so little and so mm -hmm. young and early on can make a huge difference. Are mm -hmm. the children in the book autistic? One of the characters struggles a little bit more and, and the other one helps them along the way and encourages oh, them. And, and it really makes a big difference. I think in real life, I yeah. see it with my little children. Mm -hmm. They're in a really good school where the children are all encouraged mm -hmm. to support each other and understand each other. And, you know, as we've spoke about before, we're living in a huge, big, diverse world. Mm -hmm. We need it to be fully inclusive. Yeah. We need yeah. it to be understood and accepted. And, and everybody, regardless of your additional mm -hmm. needs or who you are, we all just need to be able to be comfortable to be ourselves exactly. and just to accept each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. I think... Um, I mean, I don't have kids, but I hope that you, the, the time your kids are growing up in now is very different to when we were at school. Because I feel like, especially with you with autism, I've got ADHD, which presents itself in different ways. And when I was at school, you know, I would do all those masking techniques to try and control it and hide, because you just... There wasn't that kind of... Um, it wasn't celebratory of being different. It was yeah. like you had to fit into this box and everyone has to behave this certain way. And if you didn't behave like other people, it kind of be a bit like, mm. But I think, I hope the world is changing and the work you've done talking about yeah. autism and you guys doing that special, mm. you know, talking about neurodiversity, yeah. that all of that stuff is so important. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. Definitely. And I think... Yeah. I mean, we... I think so many of us can see within you a, a, renew, a, a, a bigger sense of confidence, yeah. mm. you know, and that gorgeous smile of yours just oozes confidence, I think, which perhaps was, was missing before. I mean, with your, with your new lease of life and, you know, the changes at home and what have you, do you feel as though the confidence has helped you juggle the changes in your life better? Yeah, definitely. I think I'm just more comfortable within myself. I don't think it's so much of a, a confidence. It's just that I'm comfortable being me. I'm trying to not pretend so much. I'm trying to not be like mm. other people. Um, and it, it's really, really helped me. And I think, you know, my mum is, is one of my biggest inspirations in life. She's the strongest woman I know. And it is because of her that I know that I will always be fine, no matter what, I will always be OK. But she always said to me from a young age, just be yourself. That is so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So, we'll just be... <laughs> Yourself, well, not oh, just I can yourself. see that glint in your just eye. That gorgeous self of yours. Are you ready to start dating, or is that something that's no? And and do you know what? I think it's it's really important to me to take this time right now to just be with me. Mm. And it might sound really boring, but I'm still getting to know me. I You're was only diagnosed yourself. a few years yeah. ago, but I'm, I want to spend time with me. When I'm not with my children, I'm at work. Those little bits of tiny space that I have yeah. where it's not that. I just, I just want to be with me. I've always been alone and I'm quite happy in my own company. Yeah. <laughs> but we love you keeping us company on the panel today. Most Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, if you want any more information on autism or any of today's discussions, you can visit the ICV website, icv.com slash helplines.